The legendary Amen Break, taken from the Winston's 1969 instrumental cover of the song Amen Brother. It's by far the most sampled breakbeat in history and can be found in thousands of tracks by artists like Aphex Twin, N.W.A., Salt and Pepper, Skrillex, The Prodigy. The list really goes on and on, including the countless drum and bass and jungle tracks from the 90s. It's even used in the Futurama theme. In this video, we're not trying to recreate the original sound. This is more about the pattern itself and what you can do with it. First, we'll program a basic 909 drum machine version of the Amen Break so we can get familiar with the pattern. After that, we'll add some details and make it sound more real. And finally, we'll sample the whole thing and chop it up. Let's get started. Hello everyone, this is... The Amen Break consists of four bars and there are just four instruments. Bass drum, snare drum, ride cymbal, and one single crash cymbal. We'll start with the kick and snare. They form a pattern that has become a staple in hip-hop. But these drum hits still need some dynamics. The TR6S places accented steps by default. We can toggle the accent by holding shift and pressing the step. The first in this pair of kick drum hits is the weak one. The snare is accented only on the 2 and 4, so let's reduce the others. And the last snare hit is actually just a very faint ghost note. Simply turning it into an unaccented step is not enough, so I'll manually change the velocity of the step. On the TR6S, an unaccented step has a velocity of 50, while an accented step has a velocity of 80. So, let's bring this one down to about 30. There are no hi-hats in the Amen Break. Their role is taken over by the right symbol. Put one on every eighth note, every odd step. If the right symbol is too loud, you can just turn down the volume of the instrument or use unaccented steps. Either way is fine, because we need no dynamics here. Now let's add some swing to taste. Not much, just enough so that it sounds a little less robotic. The tempo is about 138 BPM. The first bar is done. Since we start with the easy version of the Amen Break, let's just say that the second bar is identical to the first one. It's not, but more on that later. I'll make two copies of the pattern, one for the second bar and one for the third bar. In comparison to the previous bars, there are a few important changes happening in bar 3. The weight of the bass drum was on step 12, step 11 was unaccented. But now, this kick is pulled ahead by one step, replacing the unaccented one. While the kick is played one step earlier, the accented snare lags behind. You expect it on the 2 and 4, but in bar 3, it arrives two steps too late. The ghost note is removed. The combination of the kick being played early and the snare being played late makes the beat feel almost like it's stumbling. And that's a very important part of the Amen break. This stumbling is emphasized in the original, so if you have some oomph left on the kick drum, put it on step 11. Let's give it 90. You could also place a global accent there, if these add up with the regular accents on your drum machine. Compare this to the previous bar. So, let's make a copy of this pattern and head on to the final bar. In bar 4, the breakbeat will transition back from stumbling into the regular beat. And there's the grand finale with the crash cymbal. The first quarter of the bar is completely different from the other bars. On the kick drum, there's the combo of an unaccented and accented hit on step 3 and 4. And the snare plays two ghost notes on step 1 and 2. For the finale, we will place a single crash cymbal on step 11. When the crash cymbal is played, the ride pauses. The drummer only has so many hands, you know. The cymbal works pretty well with the stronger kick drum on step 11 we placed in the previous bar. If 
we simply switch to a drum kit with samples of acoustic drums, this doesn't really sound convincing. The TS success can only take us so far, so let's switch to a different machine. I've already programmed the exact same pattern on the Deluge, which sends the notes via MIDI to a drum plugin on the computer, Addictive Drums 2. This gives us some advantages that sadly no drum machine can offer us. Many velocity levels that all sound different, they're not just the same sample played softer or louder. Then there's multi-sampling, meaning even if I trigger the same velocity multiple times, we'll hear a different sample each time. Let's listen to how the pattern sounds now, after the upgrade. Another advantage is that we can choose between multiple stroke types on the same drum. In this case, we're using two different snare strokes, open hit and shallow hit. Notice the difference. The open hit sounds lower, while the shallow hit sounds higher. Out of all the accented snare hits in the pattern, there are two that sound lower. Step 5 in bar 2 and step 15 in bar 3. Listen closely to the snare drums. Although several people I asked couldn't hear it, I believe there's a kick drum hit right here in bar 1, between step 12 and 13. Let's zoom in and place it right between the kick and snare. Not too loud, just a subtle bouncing of the kick drum beater. This gives the phrase a somewhat thundering quality. Compare this to the cleaner double hit in bar 2. Let's listen to the whole pattern. Notice that the crash symbol is still ringing when the pattern restarts. It spills right into bar 1. If you loop the original, this won't happen. So let's program a symbol choke at the end of our pattern. This way, the symbol is silent when the pattern repeats. Before we turn this whole thing into a single sample, we will apply a tiny bit of humanization. We won't go into detail here, because we're actually making a separate video on that topic. But subscribe if you haven't already. And turn on that notification bell, so you don't miss the video. I've rendered out all four bars of our Amen break as a single file, which I copied onto the SD card of the Deluge. If you support us on Patreon, you can download this exact high-quality WAV file, including a detailed transcription of the Amen break. There are also many cheat sheets and drum patterns on there, if you're interested. I'll set the sample mode to stretch and place the entire sample across four bars. Let's take a look at what we can do with it. When people first started sampling and using the Amen break, time stretching wasn't available, so changing the speed of the sample always resulted in a pitch change as well. The speed and pitch are linked, like on a tape machine or a record player. If we set pitch speed to link, we'll get exactly that. Decreasing the tempo will also decrease the pitch. If we lower the tempo into hip-hop regions, the kick becomes nice and beefy. But if we go the opposite direction, towards drum and bass and jungle territory, the pitch goes up and we lose bass frequencies. To give it back some oomph, we can augment the loop with a kick drum of our choice, a 909 style kick for example. If we set pitch speed to independent, the pitch and speed no longer influence each other. We get time stretching. Now an algorithm will stretch the sample to fit the programmed length, while keeping the pitch intact. This way, we lose less bass frequencies when speeding up. But be aware that this can introduce artifacts, especially when slowing down too much. Now let's have some fun. We'll take the Amen break and slice it up into parts.
I'm basically creating a drum kit out of different aim and break fragments, one of which is reversed. I put all of them into a choke group so they can never play together at the same time. The aim and break is now split into several smaller pieces and each of these is assigned to a note on the sequencer. Now we can freely recombine the parts. We hope you liked our aim and breakdown. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and leave a comment. It really helps us a lot.